Welcome back. Next, we'll take a look at primitives in Q. Um, so we've already seen some of these very basic ones, so they should look very familiar to you. We've got things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, the only one that might look a bit um, different is division. Like in a lot of other languages, that would be represented by a forward slash. Um, in Q, we have it as a percentage sign. Um, so just to be aware of that does, does trip me up sometimes. I still go for the forward slash and uh, forget. Um, so um, let's run these different operations. So in this one, we're running, we're adding two plus 4.0. Um, so that becomes a float because I've indicated here that I'm adding it to a float. Um, and again, we've seen earlier, depending on the highest level of um, granularity, um, that's what your result will output. Um, and then here I'm doing six divided by three is two. Um, so they're very straightforward. Um, <clears throat> try out using those um, and have a go with this next exercise. So we're asking, um, we've got a single serving of mint M&Ms. Um, so we've got 140 calories in a single serving. And then um, our calorific intake um, per day is approximately 2000. Um, so let's use division to see how many bags we can have and stay under allowance. I feel seen at this point. Uh, <laughs> so we're assuming as well, we can only eat whole bags. So we're gonna, we, might, we need to use division, but then we need to also check we can only use whole bags. Um, so you can, and there's many ways to do that. Um, one of the shortest ways is to use the keyword floor. So have a quick look at your um, reference card, read a bit of a floor. Um, what it basically does, it will floor to the um, lowest, nearest hold number um we should help you with that exercise cool so once you have that one done um we'll just touch on a few more um of the the keywords um in q so we've seen a lot of them up here and um, we're obviously not going to go through them all um and some other interesting ones to kind of learn at the beginning um we've seen type floor we also see null now uh, we also have neg so what neg basically does is gets the negative of a number um so you can uh, use the, the keyword neg in front and you could also use minus um, as well. We also have in, so in will basically check two inputs. So you can see I've got two inputs, one is on the left and one is on the right. This is called infix notation, by the way, when it's laid out like this. Um, and if I do one in one, two, three, it's basically saying checking is one in one, two or three. And then the second one is saying is one or two in one, two or three. Um, so what I get returned is a number of Boolean results. Um, so I've got a true, yes, one is in this one and then um, a true for both of these for the second one. So my one is in this list and two is in this list. So if I change that to something that isn't in the second list, for example, I get a one and a zero back. Um, so that's a handy little function. Um, one final one is the keyword um, a primitive um, mod. Um, so what mod does is basically will give you the remainder um, of the division of your inputs. So for example, we're, we're going to, if we just show a quick example first before we start the exercise, that might help. So if we did um, six mod two, for example, we get zero back. And if we change that to seven, we get one because um, that's our remainder left. So we could change that to something else and you see um, you get your remainder back. Um, so five goes into seven once with a two remainder. Um, so this is used very commonly when you're trying to determine what day of the week um, you have. Um, so we've got seven days of the week. Um, so if we divide the current date by the days of the week, depending on the, the remainder that we've left over, we can determine where we, which day we have in the week, um, which is that's a very common function to do that. Um, so have a go with that exercise. Um, it's also using the keyword in here in, this, in the last section um, and getting you to combine um, all the things you've kind of gone through above. Cool. Um, now, once you're happy with that, let's move on and look at operator precedence. So this is really important. Um, put a big red flag or NB around this. So in, in Q, in order to understand code or, or reading people's existing code, you must understand um, that it's right to left and also when creating your own code. So if you're, if you're looking at code, um, the order of operation um, is right to left. Um, so there's many different reasons why this is done like this, um, but they're basically all performance based. Um, and you also don't need to have any um, preceding tables or any lookup uh, to determine, you know, if we're using something like, you know, mathematical notation like BOMDAS, you'd obviously have to check um, where that 
where that operation will come in the order of precedence. Um, so with in Q, it doesn't do any of that. It just says it's always going to be right to left. Some people also call it, call it left of right, which just confuses me. I stick to right to left, um, but you might hear that being mentioned. Um, so what do I mean by that? What would you expect this cell to run? So, um, or to return. So we've got three by uh, four, which is 12 plus two is 14. So someone looking at this, not being aware of this rule would expect this to return for 14 when in actual fact it returns 18 because we're right to left. So we're doing four plus two, um, which is six and then six multiplied by three is 18. So that's, if you take something away from this video, um, that's one of the main things um, that we'll be seeing uh, over and over again and that you need to be aware of. Um, so just to kind of hammer that point home, have a quick look at this exercise and see, can you guess what the following three expressions um, return? Um, you can see here the first one, I have no parenthesis. The second one, I do have parenthesis. And the third one, I do as well in a different place. Um, so when, when we have this right to left evaluation, you can often get, a, get rid of your parenthesis because you don't need to say, oh, do this piece of the the, um, the operation first, um, but there's no harm in having it in there. And um, if you're starting out and it helps you to have more brackets in there in a long, long expression, go for it. It has no implication on performance. It's just down to personal preference. Um, so we leave that up to the user. Um, but when you are looking at other people's code, it can look quite condensed. And, and that's because, um, because of this reason. Now, um, so next, what, what are the comparison primitives? So we've got things that are very straightforward and intuitive, like greater than and less than, and then we do greater than and equal sign when it's greater than or equal to, and same for less than. And then for not equals to, it's um, the, the sign here. Um, so it's the less than sign and the greater, greater, than, greater than sign. Um, so if we run these here, you'll get all our Booleans returned. So they're always gonna return um, a true or a false, whether the statement is true or not. Um, then when we're looking at equality, we've got two different equality operators in Q. Um, the first one is the um, equals. So equals will say, is this um, value the same? Um, so if I run this, I get a true on this. So four is the same as four. Um, and then our second equality operator is the this tilde character. And what tilde does is checks for the value, but also for the type match. Um, so for example, when I'm running that, I'm getting zero back. Um, so depending on whether you care about checking the type or not, um, you can decide to use equals or tilde. Um, also, another difference between the two of them is when we're looking at um, larger data structures like, like lists. So I have a list on the left here, of three values long, and then on the right here, um, and similarly on the bottom. And when I run both of these, you see when I run equals, it's checking in a pairwise fashion. So it's doing one, checking against one, two against two, and three against three. Um, so if I change this last one here to something different, I'd see my last one became uh, uh, a false. Um, and then the second list is just saying, look, is the entire thing true? Um, and it isn't because of this too. So if I make this 2.0, we see the entire thing is true because the types weren't matching before. Um, so depending on you, if you want, you know, the pairwise results returned for each value, or you just want to know in summary, does this whole thing equal the other thing? <laughs> um, you can decide which one you want to use. Um, so just to recap on that, we've got a few little more exercises here. So have a pause of the video and um, see if you can figure out these. So what do you expect the below expressions to return? So we've got um, we need to be aware of our order of operations here. And then also whether we're using um, equals or tilde will determine um, what the results look like. Um, so have a go with those and then you can check your solution once you're ready to just confirm um, those. Cool. Um, so the last section we're gonna touch on in this video is function notation. So I did mention um, just briefly there that um, above here we had infix notation. Um, I think that was back when we used uh, in, I think I showed. So this here, would be infix notation, this is also infix notation. So it's one parameter, the name of the function followed by the second parameter. Um, in comparison to that, we also have a second kind of notation called functional notation. And you can see that indicated with the square brackets. Um, sometimes you don't have the square brackets um, as well. Um, 
And you might have noticed this when we were looking at our different keywords. So let's go to, what haven't we seen yet? Do we go to in maybe? Um, yeah, so you can see in fixed notation looks like this. And this is my functional notation. So it's really nice in the code.kx.com website. This show you the syntax both ways. And it's purely user preference to, you know, it's up to the user themselves um, to determine which one they like better. Um, maybe if you're working on a project and you all trying to keep things consistent, you all might have a mandate to favor one over the other. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, it's down to user preference. Again, there's no performance indications um, to whichever one you choose. Um, so you can see that runs the same thing um, here. And you can see doing my in, um, in infix. So I'm doing one in these two, or if I pass it like this. So I pass the name of the function, then the square brackets, and then my multiple parameters need to be separated by a semicolon. So if I got rid of this, um, that's not doing anything. Um, it's not giving me any output because I only have one parameter and the function in requires two parameters. So I need to have two parameters and that's that's how we're indicating that. So separated by this semicolon. Yeah, so let's just change that to something that's true to prove that's doing what we think it is. Yeah, so we've got a 1B back. Um, so this can get a little bit um, uh, confusing for newbies as well. So just, um, I can point this out in future videos and um, th th you know, there's quite often more than one, more than two or three ways that things can look. Um, so quite often in our solutions as well, we'll show a few different variants of that as well. Um, so in the final exercise here, um, we're introducing another new keyword, um, just sneaking them all in there, <laughs> um, called moving average, and it's going to calculate pairwise moving average on the list. So have a read of that on your code.kx.com website and then try that out. Um, and then I'll see you in the next video for our last module in this um, Adams and Primitives series.